Grace and peace to you in the name of God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. And welcome to Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of our journey into the wilderness with Jesus. Just as Jesus was led by the Spirit, not even really by his own desire, maybe, but by the Spirit of God to be tested and tempted in the wilderness by God's enemy. We, too, in some ways against our will, have been led into the wilderness. We have spent the last nearly year in the wilderness, and so these 40 days shouldn't feel like too much. But God will meet us here. And as we step into this season of Lent, as we journey with Jesus, our desire is that through these next 40 days, new life, new energy, new possibilities, healing and transformation and hope would all begin to sprout and be made manifest in our lives and in our community, in our neighborhood and our world because we followed Jesus into the wilderness and ultimately to the cross. And so it's in seasons like these that we are trotting in well-worn territory, territory of, of the human experience where people have gone before us and said, mark this time, it's important, pay attention. And one way that we do that is by engaging in different types of prayer. In a way, it's, it's kind of like walking along a trail that other people have worn for us, and we are following in their footsteps. And so I'm gonna invite us into a prayer that has been prayed for uh, many years by numbers and scores and communities of Jesus people all over the world as a way of focusing our attention on the journey that God is inviting us to, to step from death into life. So the words will be on your screen and you are invited to respond either out loud or in your own spirit to the bold words that are printed on your screen. Let's pray together. For 40 days and nights, the rain fell and the waters covered the face of the earth. Lead us, Jesus, from death to life. For 40 years, the people wandered, seeking the land of God's promise. Lead us, Jesus, from death to life. Moses spent 40 days on the mountain, learning the commandments of God. Lead us, Jesus, from death to life. Elijah traveled for 40 days in the wilderness to hear the voice of God in the silence. Lead us, Jesus, from death to life. Jonah cried out to the people of Nineveh, Repent, for in 40 days you will perish. Lead us, Jesus, from death to life. Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and was tested by the devil. Lead us, Jesus, from death to life. Eternal God, as we are baptized into the death of Jesus, so give us the grace of repentance that we may pass through the grave with him and be born again into eternal life. For Jesus is the one whose death brings us life, both here and now and forever. Amen. Let's worship together. Lord, who throughout 
of these forty days for us did fast and pray. Teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend and did the victory win, oh, give us strength in you to fight. Gracious Lord, to die to self and so to live by your most holy word. And through these days of penitence and through your passion time, to Ash Wednesday and Lent 2021. Now, to be honest, not having grown up with this tradition, I can still remember being a young college student, sneaking in the back to a service, walking forward and getting that black cross smeared into my forehead for the first time. And as I recall, I spent the rest of the day not so much in contemplation, uh, as much as just wondering, weren't we allowed to kind of rub it off? Was that like impious because I was embarrassed to be seen by other people? Or was that okay? So I know that by now, many of you will have gotten ashes already, or perhaps you're planning to come by later today. Still others of us are observing Lent virtually this year, right? And whatever the case though, we are all together in asking the question, along with millions of other Jesus followers around the world, what does this all really mean anyways? Uh, these two small swipes. Remember that you are dust, reminding us of that dust that the Creator God breathes life and worth into, and to dust you shall return. Our limits, our mortality is real. In this gesture, we're offered a simple sign that reminds us that from start to finish, our lives are lived in reliance on God. And so one of the things that uh, Ash Wednesday brings with it is confession. And I know that that's a loaded word with lots of negative connotations for us. Maybe for you, confession is just an empty religious checkbox, right? Or for others of us, I know that we can sometimes feel that confession is something that we're forced into, like the scolding parent who tells us to say you're sorry, to who? Or uh, perhaps it's a scene from a crime show, right, where the suspect is in the interrogation room and they're being peppered with questions until they finally confess to their crime and everyone says, aha! Thankfully, the biblical portrayal of confession is nothing like that. One of my favorite thinkers, uh, the great James K.A. Smith, has given a different definition for confession that's been something of a game changer for me. He describes confession as the discarded desire of every heart. Meaning it's what we long for deep down, but might not even realize because we've already thrown the thing away that we're craving. So let's look at an example of confession. This one comes straight from the Bible's playlist of songs, track number 51. 
And according to tradition, this prayer is offered by the famous King David as he faces an expose of his egregious use of power. There's a scandal, there's an affair, innocent blood has been shed, and now we find David scrambling for what to do next. And the prayer that he pens in this moment of desperation is a painfully honest confession that resonates through the ages. I'm gonna read it in full, and I invite you to just let the words move you, carry you, as they will. Psalm number 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. My sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. So cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God who saves. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my mouth, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offering. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. So may it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings made whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Amen. It's a heart-rending confession to be sure. And I know that in this symphony of images and emotions, the twists and turns of this drama, that it could, just, it could be a lot to take in, right? But here's what I don't want you to miss. David's confession begins with him openly, freely admitting to his own transgressions, meaning rebellion, sin, and iniquities, or what we today would call guilt, okay? Uh, he says, here's three types of failure, and he's open about it. There's no denial, no justification. He initials his name next to all three of these failures. But that's not the end of his confession. From here, David then goes on to call on God's love and mercy and compassion to provide hope, the solution, the way forward for him to move beyond where he's at. See, I think many of us, if we're honest, myself included, we can sometimes be scared by confession because we're worried about the depth of our own inadequacies that it might reveal. And on some level, yes, confession must involve a kind of honest reckoning up front. It has to begin there. But it isn't meant to end with us wallowing in self-pity or piety. God's not after that. Rather, in confession, we move from an honest recognition of our own human condition, our dust, our ashes, uh, our own human condition as faithlessness, to then look towards God's character and faithfulness. That is the hope the foundation um, of goodness that we call upon in prayer. So notice, finally, the crescendo of actions that David calls for in, in prayer. It, it's like a Hebrew grammar lesson in verbs. God, cleanse, wash, blot out, hide your face, create, renew, restore, sustain, deliver, delight. But what about you? What is it that you desire for God to do today? What is it that you seek? Are you desperate for God to act in some way? See, in our poem, David is clear that from his vantage point, 
Without God's direct intervention, there is no next move for him. And this is true in confession. In confession, we're provided with an opportunity to cry out for God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So whether you put it in your own words or you simply choose one of these words or lines from the text, I invite you to name at the outset of this Lenten journey how it is that you long for God to show up. Maybe just write it down, let it sit there for a while, come back to it sometime in the next 40 days, and just see if maybe some life comes out of it. Because ultimately, confession is not some dreary duty. Confession is the discarded desire of every heart. Let's pray. God, as we set our hearts and minds on the coordinates of the cross, would you find us today in our frailty and our fears? Would you forgive us our sins? Would you guide us beyond our guilt with the compass of your mercy and compassion and love? Jesus, we need you. Our desire is for you. Hear our confession. Amen.
So as we have just been reminded through these great words from Pastor Brad, we are invited to step into the gift that is confession, the owning of our humanity. And you, maybe you've done this, uh, maybe you've come through the, the, the parking lot already and have the ashes around you. Maybe you have yet to come and maybe uh, this is the experience that you're choosing. But whichever on-ramp you're taking, I invite you now to freely and joyfully step into the confession, the truth-telling of who we are and ultimately of the goodness and the faithfulness and the love of God that is for you, that we claim. And so, again, the words of this prayer of confession will be in your screen. They, will, they are all in bold this time because this is not only just something that we do as individuals, but as a community. We are claiming and naming our situation before God. So I will lead us again in this prayer. I will give us a few moments partway through to name whatever particular things in our own lives that we need to just bring before God. And then I'll speak the words of grace over us. So let us pray. God of mercy, God of mercy, God of mercy. You sent Jesus to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way and your truth and your life. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained. We are misled by shame as we see ourselves stained, even when we have been made pure. And we are misled by distortions that make us seem great, even when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. We confess now the sin, the guilt, the shame in our own lives before you now. Have mercy, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness as we follow Jesus into life. Amen. Now that we have confessed, told the truth about who we are and who God is, we now receive the truth that in confessing our sins, God is faithful to give us mercy and grace and peace. And the good news, my friends, as we embark into this wilderness season of Lent, is that you are forgiven and that you come from the dust and to the dust you shall return. May you have a great meaningful, rich Lent. May you experience life before death. And may you follow Jesus 
to the cross and through the cross into new life. Amen.